Thank you, dear readers, and thank you, all of you, for coming here. I want to open by thanking my highly valued readers who have uh, kept me on the pieces of paper that I call arms. My wonderful editor, Miriam Nichols, Peter Quartermain and Meredith Quartermain, Karen and Brian De Beck, Chris and Sophie De Diakos, Helen Tolman and Sarah Kennedy, Colin Brown, Laura Saluti, poetry editor of the University of California Press, and never forget where you find my books, Duffy books, yeah. <laughs> and Michael Farley. responsible for this grand evening. You have brought tears to my eyes and we can dry them. <laughs> my words. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I read 29 and it's a blank sheet of paper. I'm always in time. This poem takes place at Harvard and, uh, and uh, long, many years ago. Quitting a job so you can tell where I was going, right out of town. <laughs> Nothing to it. I counted my money. There wasn't much. I took a cup of wild courage out of the Charles River, yellow iris perched like canaries on the shore. Climb out of the rocks, I said. With 30, 33 years, you have a few left. Whatever the fortune teller in Chicago said, you won't die strangled. The tea leaves particle. Oh, I expect the joy to last all summer. I'll hang on to it with a gold beak. The hot Boston summer, the sweating thighs, the slow building irritation with the wilted people, streets, subways, windows, ledges. Dusty sparrows dart among the red legged pigeons, winning bread. Last week, I quit my job. It is a geographical necessity, I said, to find an image for this century, crowded, speechless. I needed time. Whatever it is here, where it isn't, the blue-winged flies are almost beautiful. I think of Lawrence's angry poems. What have they done to you, men of the masses, creeping back and forth to work? Ah, the people, the people. Surely they are flesh of my flesh. The dancer completes a turn stands waiting to resume. Rhythmic, sexual, begins again on Cambridge Street. The arms lift away from the body for balance, the hands close, breathless, touching the air as a cat paws at unimagined beasts. Look at it. The joy will outlast summer. I quit my job. I abolished money. <laughs> <laughs> the moon shines 
is the straggly body of the tree of heaven. They grow out of gutters, drain pipes among the falling bricks between vacant houses. The stars are like the leaves this summer. I've tasted their sweat. I think of two fools rabbit bounding bitter herbs, the seeding grass, and yes, this blue, oh, inward mountain. This poem is for Robert Creeley, written some years back, right? Robert Creeley is always with me, with Jack Spicer and Robert Duncan, and the painter Jess, and of the list that go on. I think I'll let you find them. A gift. There are in this room two tables, and in this one, three. They are full of invisible motion, shaped out of their origin. Oak, redwood, mahogany, out of the window. Boy thieves with flashlights in the fig tree. No bodies distinct, distinct from their souls. No city distinct from the language, from the tracings of the new Wells Fargo. Building 42 stories through the fog, welders, lights glow. The great vines twist around the city in your mouth a concurrence. The poet's kiss given, caught like a dual adept on my lips. The attraction of it scattered in public, where now and then God knows you, your love doesn't count. In this period. <clears throat> Pentimental. It's a parabola. That's it. When you get to my age, words and books are, oh, up, so down, a buried mind. The lane beside my home beaten by cars turning into electric garages. Out of house, into house, garbage cans and compost bins a wildness of clematis climbs, the telephone wires which birds mark and squirrels trap ease above cats stalking. Scavengers, who are shadows of this culture's wounds, go by the by, looking for beer cans to cash in. Metaphoric traffic of two materialities of what we are in language. It's fingering grasp and streetwise mica wander in the slick, that language left when it flew through the air, unsexual and transmundane, and cared less the desire composes nature. Uncovered facts of whose body in pieces, heartland of moonburn, subsists at midnight, a shallow time, where horizontals and verticals misshape, mistake, and go after themselves, adventurers of thought.